Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Apple ImageWriter 2 dot matrix printer from 1986, as well as looking at the software needed to get it up and running on a modern Windows 10 64-bit computer. Alright, so on the software side of things, we need number one, a driver for the ImageWriter 2, but we also need to make a couple of modifications to that driver because it is buggy, actually. Uh, the only version, the only 64-bit version of this driver that exists for Windows was included on XP64 as well as Windows Server 2003. So I have a 64-bit version of XP here that I have downloaded and have extracted the files out of the ISO with 7-zip. And in this uh, folder structure, we need to look for ntprint.inf, which is the, uh, the driver file that basically gives a list of all the different uh, printer drivers that are available to Windows. And it's different for every version of Windows, which is why we need the Windows XP64 version to uh, load up on a newer version of Windows. We can't just use the one that's built into Windows 10 here. I have not tested this on Windows 11 or any other version of Windows, but I would assume that it is similar at least for Windows 8, 8.1, um, 7, stuff like that. Windows 11, not entirely sure because I've never used it. <laughs> uh, anyway, we don't need to be in here. We can go into the uh, Add Printer dialog for Windows. So we go to Printers and Scanners, Add a Printer and we'll wait because it will not auto-detect it, obviously. Go to the printer that I want isn't listed. And then we're going to add a local printer with manual settings. It is on COM1. I have a hardware serial port on this computer, otherwise you can use a USB to, uh, USB to serial adapter. Um, I've used one successfully. There's not like a voltage problem or anything because this this printer probably uses uh, more than uh, more than plus minus five volt logic levels. Anyway, uh, com one next, and now we are going to load up uh, ntprint.inf for Windows XP sixty four because currently it is loaded up ntprint.inf for this version of Windows ten. So in order to load up the XP version, we are going to go to have disk, browse, and it's already been loaded up, but we'll go to, we'll navigate to it. So it's on my desktop. Go into the extracted files from the ISO, AMD64, and then in here we will find ntprint.inf. Open. Okay, and then it will load up all of the available 64-bit drivers to XP64. And you would think it's in Apple, but it's not. Apple did not release a 64-bit driver for this computer because I believe they stopped selling it in 1990, 1993 or 1996. I, those are the two numbers that are sticking in my head. Anyhow, there are two potential drivers that can work for this, at least two on this list. Uh, doesn't matter which one you load up because it uses the exact same files. Um, traditionally, uh, everyone uses one from C. Ito. Uh, the C. Ito 8510 is what will be loaded. Additionally, if you wanted to, you could use the AT&T 470, 475. It loads up the exact same file, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to be changing the name of it in Windows later anyway, so it's going to show up as ImageWriter 2 instead of C. Ito 8510. So select this, click Next, going to install the printer name. We're going to rename it to Apple Image Writer 2. Next. And it installs. Not going to share it right now. And we're not going to print a test page because, as I said before, this driver that was included with XB64 is, in fact, buggy. We need to make a couple modifications to a driver file in order to get things to print correctly. So we're going to close out of this, and we are going to navigate to the driver files. So when you install this driver, 
it goes into Windows, System32, Spool, Drivers, X64, 3, and in here are where the driver files are located for the CITO 8510 printer. And the file that we need to edit is ci8510.gpd. So if we open this thing up, um, it looks very similar to the version, it might even be exactly the same as the version included with a 32-bit driver, which does not have bugs and does in fact work correctly with 32-bit Windows operating systems. So this is the unmodified version of this file. I have a version that has already been modified pulled up right here, ci8510.gpd. Um, so we're going to open this up and I'll walk you through what changes needed to be made to this file so that you can go in and change them on your own. First of all, uh, I don't know if this is s simply a limitation of the CITO 8510 printer, but the maximum resolution for this printer is limited out of the box by the driver that is used. So uh, the Image Writer 2 is capable of printing uh, if you're if you're doing if you want the same horizontal and vertical resolution it is it is capable of printing uh, 144 dpi. Um, out of the box it is limited to 96 uh, horizontal dots per inch and 72 vertical dots per inch. So uh, this first line right here is simply the name that it displays to the operating system for what uh, what its printing capabilities are. We are going to change DPI right here is uh, is um, our first parameter to change. So change it to 144 by 144 uh, instead of 96 by 72. Text DPI is going to be exactly the same. Pins per log pass, which stands for pins per logical pass, which is the um, vertical pass of the print head because the print head on this printer moves or er, it moves horizontally obviously so uh, the logical pass is what is uh, the vertical pass that's calculated in software and we double this because it enables a feature in the printer to um, alternate between advancing by one line and one one forty fourth of a line at a time so basically you double the density of the dots uh, that you're printing um, by printing two passes by and offsetting them by one dot at a time. So you, you basically double the resolution, um, but you just need to print two passes each time. Pins per physical pass can stay the same because there are only eight pins that are used for printing in graphics mode on this printer. There are, I believe, are nine pins on the printhead, but only eight are used. Um, command, we need to change the command that is sent to the printer so that it sets it up for 144 dpi horizontally rather than 96 dpi horizontally. So um, if it's in brackets, this command, uh, 1b is an escape code. Um, and if it's uh, a hex number, which 1b is, it will be in brackets. Otherwise, the letter indicates what uh, what byte is being sent to the printer. So instead of E over here, which sets it to 96 dpi, we're going to change it to a lowercase p, which sets it at 144 dpi. Um, that is the only change that we got to make right here. Um, paper size, we're going to leave the same. I tried messing around with this, but it introduced some new bugs, actually. Um, the Image Writer 2 is only capable of printing, um, well, or, or, or I, sh I should say that it has a hardware margin of one quarter inch on each side. And so um, 72, if you take that from the master units that I talked about earlier, 288, uh, 288 is 288 dots per inch. 72 is one quarter of that, meaning that the printable origin of the page is one quarter inch to the right of the far left hand side. Printable area, again, if you divide it by 288, um, is as far to the right 
uh, that the print head can move and successfully print. Again, a hardware limitation of the printer. This is for US letter size, this is for A4. Um, additionally, on the original one, there was, uh, let's see, where was it? Paper size. There was uh, Euro Fanfold, I believe this shows up as, or down here, option three, Euro Fanfold is what that shows up as, but uh, never used it, so I took it out. <laughs> um, half toning, uh, don't really need to worry about, but I'll explain it quick. Half toning is uh, the software that Windows uses to take an image or any sort of file and rasterize it into a series of dots, a bitmap basically, that the printer is able to print. Um, and these basically just adjust the resolution that uh, Windows creates that bitmap in for the printer to print. If you if you size it up to an 8x8, this would be the lowest resolution. It, uh, it has the largest blocks. So I haven't really tested it much. It may print faster, not entirely sure. But these are all the options that you are able to select when printing a document, a picture, something like that in the printer preferences. Uh, command start doc. Um, again, we need to change change a code here. Uh, as I said before, these are two escape codes. Uh, that is one byte. I forget exactly what it means, but it. Uh, if you look it up in the service manual for the image writer too, it'll tell you what exactly that means. Another escape code, and then a lowercase p. Um, again, to change it to 144 DPI for the document setup. Then our next order of business is the most important one, actually, which is right down here, Mirror Raster Byte. This is not included in the original version of CI8510.gpd, uh, but we need to include it. In the 32-bit version of this driver, it is not included because it prints correctly. However, in the 64-bit version, we need it. Uh, and I discovered this by um, installing this driver and trying to print things with this printer initially. And what happened was that when Windows rasterizes whatever it's printing and sends it to the printer, uh, it does so one vertical line at a time. So as the printhead moves from left to right across the page, it will print vertical rows of dots in a continuing order. And when Windows sends data to the printer, it, uh, because it has eight pins, sends one byte of data for each vertical line in each horizontal pass. So if you have 144 dots per inch and you have eight and, or eight inches because you have uh, a quarter inch margin on each side, that's eight times 144 um, vertical lines in each pass of the printhead. Anyway, when it sends this byte, with the 64-bit version of the driver, the bit order is reversed from what it should be. So, each document or picture or whatever that you send to the printer will almost print correctly. However, each line will be upside down. So, it'll almost look right. It won't be just completely random data, but it will still look very incorrect and be somewhat unreadable. We correct this with Mirror Raster Byte. It, by including it in the version of CI8510.gpd, it flips the order of every byte that is sent to the printer that is not a escape code or command byte or something like that. And that, in turn, flips each line that the printer prints upside down so it prints correctly. So, once you've made those changes, uh, again, simplified mirror raster byte equals, or not equals, colon, true. Um, you need to change command start doc, command, uh, you need to change this from a uppercase E in the command bit to a lowercase p to switch it to 144 dpi. And then additionally, you need to change pins per logical pass to 16 so that it prints 144 vertical DPI. And then you need to change text DPI and DPI to 144, 144. And then it doesn't really matter, but just for 
the sake of visibility in the operating system and in the software that you use, change the name to 144 by 144 dots per inch. All right, so once you've made those changes to that file, you can simply, well, if you have uh, if you have a version of Windows that uh, has um, administrative control, then you're going to need to drag and drag uh, this file out of here first because you can't edit it when it is in this directory structure. Uh, you're going to drag it out of there, make the edits. Um, I, because I've already edited the file, I'm going to simply drag and drop the edited version into there. Uh, but once you've made the edits to your original file, I would I would recommend backing it up in case you uh, make a typo or really screw something up. Um, but you can just simply drag and drop it back into that directory. I'm going to copy it back so I have a, uh, a backup. Then if you go back into the printer page in settings and you print a test page, make sure the printer is turned on. final item of note here. I've already got one page from the box of uh, fan pulled behind it fed through this printer because if you have the top of the first page right up by the print head as it passes these two rollers here as the page feeds through it will jam. Speaking from experience uh, the tractors are right behind here and uh, it will tear the the pin feed paper and you're gonna have a paper jam not fun so I keep one page fed through and you'll see uh, you'll see how I eject the page after each item prints and I figured it would be a good way to end this video of course we have to print an image on the image writer so I pulled the picture for this printer off of its Wikipedia page uh, one item of note uh, I set the half toning for this printer in the printer preferences um, to supercell, meaning it's going to rasterize everything that it prints that is not text at its highest possible resolution for 144 dpi. So without further ado, we're going to watch this play out in real time. This is the image for the ImageWriter 2 off of Wikipedia, printed on the ImageWriter 2. There we have it. In order to eject a page, deselect the printer so that it's offline, and then we hit form feed. 
reselect it to re-enable the printer, and then we can tear off the sheet. Voila!